One of the very first projects that he initiated on the 26th of July 2003 was the setting up of the Tahir Foundation in memory of Hadrat Khalifa Turmasi IV, the purpose of which was to push forward all the designs in which the late Khalifa Turmasi had taken particular interest. کہ حضرت خلیفہ المسیح راوے رحم اللہ تعالیٰ کی جاری فرمودہ تحریکات ہیں اور غلبہ اسلام کے لیے آپ کے مختلف منصوبے تھے آپ کے خطبات ہیں تقاریر ہیں مجالس سے عرفان ہیں ان کی تدوین اور اشاعت کا کام ہے تو یہ کافی وسیع کام ہے جس کے لیے ایک الگ ادارہ کے قیام کی ضرورت ہے تو اس سوچ کے بعد میں نے یہ فیصلہ کیا ہے کہ ایک ادارہ تاہر فاؤنڈیشن کے نام سے قائم کیا جائے اور اس کے انشاءاللہ ایک مجلس ہوگی بورڈ آف ڈائریکٹرز ہوگا جس جو بیس ممبران پر مشتمل ہوگا دعا کریں کہ یہ جو کمیٹی بنے گی اس کو اللہ تعالیٰ کام کرنے کی توفیق بھی دے اور ہر لحاظ سے وہ کام جو حضور رحم اللہ تعالیٰ کے بعض تحریرات کے ایسے ہیں جو بھی the institution of Khilafate Ahmadiyya started after the demise of the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, on the 26th of May 1908, with the election of his first successor, Hadrat Mulana Nuruddin, as Khalifa Tulmasi I, on the 27th of May 1908. In anticipation of the hundred years of Ahmadiyya Khilafat, which were to be completed in 2008, Hadrat Khalifa Tulmasi V made an announcement concerning the Thanksgiving celebration of the Khilafate Ahmadiyya Centenary. He put forth a spiritual plan before the members, which included prayers and a supererogatory fast every month, with the intention that may Allah keep the Ahmadiyya Khilafat established forever. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community is a truly global community, and Hadrat Khalifa Tulmasi V is by every measurement cosmopolitan in experience and steeped in erudition. He travels widely around the world to check up on the activities of the missions of the movement in those countries and to make an appraisal of the opportunities of further progress. One cannot help but be captivated when one is in his presence, whether on a one-on-one -on -one basis or amid a sea of thousands of people, he makes that personal connection all the time. He possesses an amazing personality that really overshadows almost everything else going on around him. Almost all Ahmadis or non-Ahmadis alike who have experienced him at close quarters understand the special spiritual luminosity he radiates. In August 2003, Khudur traveled outside the United Kingdom for the first time after becoming Khalifa Tulmasi. He traveled by road to Germany, breaking journey at Belgium, France and Holland. The main purpose of this blessed journey was to address the annual convention of the Ahmadiyya community in Germany and to meet the members who live in large numbers in those European countries. On the 3rd of October 2003, Khudur inaugurated the Beitel Foto Mosque, which is a magnificent architectural landmark in London. Allah Ta'ala ke fadl se, aaj inshallah Ta'ala, balke is waqt, jumah ke khutbe ke saath, is masjid ka, jis ka naam, Khus Khalifatul Musir Rabe, Rahimullah Ta'ala ne, بیت الفطور رکھا تھا افتتا کیا جا رہا ہے الحمدللہ It is Western Europe's biggest mosque complex with a capacity to accommodate 10,000 worshippers Adorned with a 15.5 meter dome the mosque is located in Morden on a 5.2 acre site the mosque complex provides the community with a central focal point for meetings, social and religious events. The community acquired the site in 1996 
and the late Hadrat Mirza Tahir Ahmad, Khalifat Tulmasi IV, laid the foundation stone of the mosque on the 19th of October 1999. The opening of the mosque was extensively publicized in the British and international media, and the inaugural function was attended by eminent personalities, including members of parliament, mayors, scholars, journalists, and distinguished friends of the movement, who were blessed with an inspiring spiritual address by Hadrat Khalifa Tulmasi V. On the 13th of March 2004, Hadrat Khalifa Tulmasi V embarked upon a historic four-week tour of West African countries. This faith-inspiring tour covered Ghana, Burkina Faso, Benin, and Nigeria, in that order. He graced the annual conventions of all four countries, and addressed the gatherings attended by thousands. This was a historic occasion, when, for the first time, the addresses by Khalifa Tulmasi were broadcast live on MTA International from the soil of Africa. During this epic tour, many eminent personalities of African countries, including heads of state, ministers, parliamentarians, and paramount chiefs, had audience with Hudur and attended the receptions given in his honor. <laughs> Tumultuous welcome greeted him everywhere. He consistently attracted large crowds during this trip, some amongst the largest ever assembled in the Jamaat history of West Africa. In Ghana, on the 15th of March 2004, the President of the Republic of Ghana, John Agiekum Kufur, personally welcomed him in the country. The President also attended and addressed the annual gathering of the community in Ghana in Hudut's presence on the 18th of March 2004. I took to the lectern because I just want to tell all of you I'm one with you in expressing joy and happiness in welcoming His Holiness who, as I say, is a Ghanaian because it was here by his own autobiography or is it the CV prepared for me by Mavi Wahabadam it was here he started um, the mission, his mission to serve humanity in the uh, Ahmadi movement. In Burkina Faso, the Prime Minister Paramanga Ernest Yonli and President of the country, Mr. Blaise Kompaori, had an audience with him on the 26th of March 2004. Similarly, the President of Republic of Benin, Nike Fore Dudone Solio, invited him to his palace and exchanged thoughts on matters of mutual interest. It was the first ever tour by a Khalifa to Benin. The officials readily acknowledged educational, social, as well as spiritual services rendered by the movement. <laughs> Newspapers, radio and television gave wide coverage to his travels. This journey was a tremendous success in many respects. In fact, it heralded a new era of preaching in West Africa.